Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this presentation by the Last Crescent on the return of Hazrat Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, the second coming of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has told us in many, many ahadiths about how the return of Isa alayhi salam will be one of the major signs of the end times. However, in this presentation, I want to instead focus on the Quran, on the question of what does the Quran say about the return of Isa alayhi salam. And I believe the answer to that question will shock you. Now it's really important that before we dive into the Quranic analysis that we first understand the role of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam in the end times. Why is his return prophesied? What will Isa alayhi salam do when he returns to earth? In what capacity is he returning to earth? And what does it mean for the Muslim ummah in the end times? To understand this, we need to learn the prophecy and the timeline of events of the end times. The Prophet wasallam has warned us that during the end times, the world will face such great calamities and humanity will be put through such extreme trials unlike any that ever existed before since the time of Hazrat Adam salam, since the time of the creation of man. We have been warned by the Prophet wasallam that there will be such fitna, such corruption, such pain and torment at unimaginable levels that there will be times when the best action a man can do is to bite onto the root of a tree and await his death to avoid the fitna and preserve his iman. The end times will bring such great deception that a man will wake up as a believer, as a man with iman and will become a disbeliever by the evening over the course of a single day. He will simply lose his iman because of the deception that will be present in the world. Calamities will befall the earth and once they start, they will occur faster and faster, one leading to the other. Just when you think the first calamity is over, the second will strike. And then just when you think things might be getting better, the third will come and then the fourth and then the fifth. The Prophet wasallam warned us that the signs at the end times are like pearls or beads fastened by a string. And once the string is cut, they fall one after the other. The Prophet wasallam has warned us of the killings of masses and individuals, large scale massacres of people. Take a look around yourself. Take a look at the state of the world and tell me, do you see this happening right now? Can you see it happening with your very eyes in Gaza? The Prophet wasallam has warned us of the great war, the Malhamatul Kubra, or you could say World War III. It will be an era of global war which is so severe with such tremendous battles that 99% of the combatants of the war will be killed. The battles will be so intense, the likes of which have never been seen before to such an extreme degree that even if a bird were to pass by the army, it would fall down dead before reaching the end of them, leading many to believe that this is a warning of a nuclear Armageddon. The Prophet ﷺ has warned us of the smoke, the Dukhan, and in Surah Ad Dukhan of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So be on the watch for a day when heaven shall bring a manifest smoke covering the people. This is a painful chastisement. The earth will be plunged into darkness as smoke will cover the entire world, blocking out the light of the sun, causing surface temperatures to drop below freezing levels all year round. The Prophet ﷺ has said that there will be three years of drought and great famine. In the first year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the sky to withhold one third of its rain and the earth to withhold one third of its produce. 
In the second year he will command the sky to withhold two-thirds of its rain, and the earth to withhold two-thirds of its produce. And in the third year he will command the sky to withhold all of its rain, and not a single drop will fall, and the earth to withhold all of its produce, and nothing will grow. All cloven-hoofed animals will die except those that Allah wills. It was said, What will the people live on at that time? And the Prophet وسلم, replied, Tahleel, Takbir, Tasbih, and Tahmeed. That will take the place of food for them. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. And as humanity struggles in an apocalyptic cataclysm, suffering from the pangs of hunger, drought, death and destruction, a man will emerge in the guise of a savior, a false messiah, al-Masih al-Dajjal, the single greatest fitna that will ever befall humanity. Al-Masih al-Dajjal will travel the earth and claim to save humanity from global calamity. He will appear in the form of a uniting force for peace, prosperity, and the salvation of mankind, but it will all be in deception. He will claim to show miracles like bringing people back to life. He will cause rain and provide an abundance of food to those who accept him as a prophet. It will be so hard to resist the temptation and deception of Al-Masih al dajjal because his trial is not one of strife or punishment. His is a trial of plenty. Unfortunately, the vast majority of people will submit to Al-Masih al dajjal because doing so otherwise and preserving your Iman will be like holding on to hot embers burning in your hands. The times will be so hard, so unbearable, that a believer will pass by a grave and wish that he were dead, so that his suffering would come to an end. But even in these darkest of hours, the light of Islam will still shine, and there will be a small group of Muslims who will continue to hold on to their faith firmly, despite this great adversity. They will stand against Al-Masih al dajjal they will fight for the truth, for justice, for Iman. They will be the protectors of the banner of Islam, the last stronghold of faith. Like the brave fighters of the Battle of Badr, these Muslims of the end times will stand across from armies much greater in strength, much larger in size, and they will be undaunted, unfearing, unrelenting and unshakable in their faith. And it is at this time, in this grave hour of desperation, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send forth the Savior for the entire world, the Savior of the entire Muslim Ummah and all those who dwell on the land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, not as a messenger, not as a Nabi, not as a Rasul, but as the Khalifa, as the King of the earth, like Dawood like Suleiman as a just judge, as a just ruler, as a righteous servant of Allah and a guiding light for all those who believed and withstood the hardest test of all time. Hazrat Isa salam, will not be a Jew, he will not be a Christian, but like all the Prophets of Allah, Isa salam, will be a Muslim. He will descend with his hands on the wings of two angels at the White Minaret in the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, Syria. He will pray the Salat al-Fajr with the Muslims behind the Imam Mahdi to show all those who are there that he is a servant of Allah that he will enforce the law of Islam and the Quran, and that he is the guardian of La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. The Prophet told us that if you see my brother Isa, 
then tell him that I send salam upon him. Isa alayhi salam will wipe the faces of the believers and tell them of their rank in Jannah. He will ask for the gates to be open and the great final battle between good and evil, between haqq and batil will be fought. Isa alayhi salam will vanquish and kill al masih al Dajjal at the Bab al Lud in Jerusalem and the Muslims will gain a mighty victory over the army of the Dajjal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy the forces of Ya'juj and Majuj, of Gog and Magog once and for all. And Islam will triumph in the end times. La ghalibi illallah. La ghalibi illallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a rain that will cleanse and purify the earth. The earth will produce such bounties as it did during the time of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. The earth will be so bountiful that a group of people will eat from a single pomegranate or a single bunch of grapes and it will be sufficient for them. The milk of a single cow will be enough for an entire tribe of people. All of the land and the fields will be tilled. War will cease. Grudges and hatred will disappear. It is at this time of peace and plenty that Hazrat Isa salam will be a just ruler and king for the entire world upon the Sharia of Islam and the teachings of the Holy Quran. And wealth will become abundant for all. This righteous kingdom will remain established on earth during the reign of Isa salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a pleasant wind which will take the souls of all of the believers. In Christianity, this event is called the rapture. The souls of the believers alongside Isa salam will be lifted and they will all die together and will depart from this mortal life in peace, leaving the worst amongst the people to inhabit the earth and upon them will come the day of judgment. However, there are now emerging those amongst the Ummah, supposed scholars of Islam, who are raising doubts and bringing into question this inspiring prophecy of the end times, and who are claiming that the Quran is silent on the return of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Let me say that the Quran is an ocean upon an ocean of knowledge and it is a book that explains all things and reveals itself over time. The Quran is not silent on the return of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, far from it. The Quran guides us and warns us and informs us in great detail about this very, very important event of the end times. So let us now examine the clear and undeniable proofs found directly in the Holy Quran, which inform us about the return of Isa alayhi salam, the savior of the Muslims in the end times. The prophecy about the return of Isa alayhi salam is the most consequential and important event of the end times, and his prophesied return will mark the beginning of an era of peace, plenty, and bounty for the whole world. The signs about the return of Isa salam are scattered throughout the Quran, and by putting together the pieces, a startling revelation occurs. We can see the Quran telling us the entire story about the return of Isa salam, the promised Messiah. So let's start at the beginning. As Muslims, we all know that Isa salam is the Messiah or Messiah. And in the Quran, we are told in Surah Ali Imran, where Allah says, O Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. So we know that Isa salam is the Messiah. But what does Messiah actually mean? Many people think that Messiah means healer, 
because Isa salam healed the blind and the lepers as one of his miracles through the will of Allah. Others think that Messiah means Savior. These are amongst the most commonly understood meanings of the word Messiah, but actually Messiah means the Anointed One. Now uh, that's a bit of a peculiar word, it's not very commonly used. So what is anointing? What does it mean to be the Anointed One, the Messiah? To understand anointing, let's jump forward 2,000 years to the coronation of King Charles of England. We are about to witness one of the most personal and private moments in the ceremony, the anointment. We are about to witness one of the most private and personal parts of this ceremony, the coronation of King Charles, which is the anointment. To thy service. The prophets of old anointed priests and kings to serve in thy name and in the The prophets of old anointed priests and kings to serve in thy name. Anointment to serve as king. As mentioned, we are about to witness as much as is possible, the most personal and private moment in this coronation, the only private moment that King Charles will have as he readies to receive the anointing with oil. And this is a religious moment, Wilfred, that will be quite meaningful. This is probably the most meaningful part of the day. It dates back to the seventh uh, century. So what is anointing? Anointing is the purification of the body and soul of a person who is to take the office of king and ruler. So if the Quran tells us that Isa salam is the Messiah, the anointed one, the one who has been anointed not by a priest, not by a prophet, but has been anointed by Allah himself, then what the Quran is telling us is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined that Isa salam will rule as a king. But the most shocking fact of all is that Isa salam has never served as a king. When he was sent to the Bani Israel as a messenger, he never once assumed the office of kingship. And this was one of the biggest reasons why despite the fact that Isa salam showed so many miracles to the Bani Israel, they still disbelieved in him because they were always expecting the Messiah to appear in the form of a king. However, as Muslims, we know and we believe in Isa salam as the Messiah, the Anointed One, the person whom Allah has chosen as King. And so you must ask a very simple question. How will Isa salam fulfill his destiny and serve as a King appointed by Allah? We know that Isa salam never served as a king during his first period on earth when he was sent to the Bani Israel and that Allah raised him up alive to himself. Then how can Isa salam be a king? And the answer is that Isa salam will fulfill his role as the Messiah, Allah's chosen king upon his return the second time, where he will defeat the Antichrist, al masih the Jal and establish a righteous and holy kingdom. And the return of Isa salam as the king is also told to us in many ahadiths of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And in this Sahih Bukhari hadith, it reads, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, by him in whose hands my soul is, by Allah, surely Jesus, the son of Mary will soon descend amongst you and will judge mankind justly as a just ruler. And in another Sahih Bukhari hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, the hour will not be established until the son of Mary descends amongst you as a just ruler, as the just king. So when we see in the Holy Quran, Allah telling the Virgin Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, of the good news that she will have a child whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, Messiah Isa ibn Maryam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also giving us, the Muslims, the readers of the Quran, the good news that when we are in the difficult period of the end times, when we are facing the greatest hardship that humanity has ever faced, then we should wait for the good news that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send 
the promised Messiah, the King who will return and establish peace and justice for the whole world. In the same way that the Quran tells us that Isa السلام, must return to earth and fulfill his role as the King and Messiah, we are also told of another very interesting prophecy that must still be fulfilled by Isa السلام, and can only be fulfilled upon his return to earth a second time. And interestingly enough, this prophecy is found in the immediately subsequent ayat of Surah Ali Imran, which tells us about Isa السلام, being the Messiah. It reads as follows, And mention when the angels said, O Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, distinguished in this world and the hereafter, and among those brought near to Allah. He will speak to the people in the cradle and in maturity, and will be of the righteous. Here we are being told of two very important and distinct phases of Isa salam's life where he will speak to the people. The first is when Isa salam is in the cradle, and the Arabic word for that is Al-Mahdi. And the second is described as in maturity, as a mature man, and that word is Waqahlan. So let us understand what these words mean in more detail. The word Mahde is derived from the root Mahad, which means a child's cradle or bed, a place prepared for a child. And this word is very clear, and we can understand the age of Isa السلام, when he spoke the first time as an infant child, the first miraculous speech where Isa السلام, as a newborn infant child spoke to the people, one of the first miracles of the Prophet Isa السلام. And we are told that the second miraculous phase of speech of Isa السلام, will be as Kahal, the root word of Waqahlan. And in the dictionary it says Kahal means of middle age, or between the age and the period when a man's hair has become intermixed with heaviness. So Kahal does not give us an exact time or time frame for the age of a person. However, if we look up the related word Shabab, which means youth, youthfulness, the prime of manhood. We go on to learn that Shabab is someone aged from 16 years old to 32, after which a man is called Kahal. So now we understand three distinct phases of the life of a person. Mahan, when they are an infant. Shabab, when they are a young man. And Kahal, when they are a middle-aged man. And the cutoff between Shabab and Kahal is in the early 30s, 31, perhaps 32. So the first miraculous period of speech of Isa as Mahad, as an infant child in the cradle, is told to us in the Holy Quran. We then know that Isa as a young, youthful man, in the peak of his youthfulness, Shabab, spoke to the Bani Israel as a messenger. But did Isa a.s. speak to the people as Kahal, as a mature, middle-aged man in his late 30s, 40s, or even 50s? Well, if we turn to the Bible, in Luke 3.23, it says, Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his work. And it is commonly understood based on historical and biblical analysis that Isa a.s. preached after his baptism by Yahya a.s or John the Baptist, for a period of between two to three years. Isa السلام, must therefore have been in his early thirties, when he was raised up alive by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the heavens, perhaps as young as thirty-one. Therefore Isa السلام, has only fulfilled his speech as Mahad, when he was an infant in the cradle, and as Shabab, or on the cusp of Shabab, when he was a young and youthful man. This means that Isa السلام, has not yet fulfilled his speech as Kahal, as a mature middle-aged man, and must return to the earth and reach middle age and speak to the people. And this prophecy of the second segment of speech of Isa السلام, is told to us directly in the Holy Quran. 
So not only does the Quran tell us that Isa Islam will return to earth as a king, the Quran also tells us that Isa Islam will spend time on earth during his second coming, that he will reach middle age and speak to men while he is the ruler and king. And this fact is also confirmed to us in a hadith, where we are told that Isa Islam will live on earth for a period of time during which he will reach the age of Kahab and confirm the truth of this prophecy. And in this Sahih Muslim Hadith, we are told that Isa salam would vanquish Al-Masih the Jal. Then people would live for seven years alongside Isa salam. There would be no rancor or hatred between two persons. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send cold wind from the side of Syria, that none would survive upon the earth having a speck of good in him or faith in him but he would die. And this is the mention of the rapture. Isa Islam reaches the age of Kahal and is able to speak to the people as a mature man. However, the story then continues and the Quran further informs us of what will happen when Isa Islam returns as King, the Messiah, and speaks to people as a middle-aged man and what will be the impact of Isa Islam's words specifically on the people of the book who will hear the words and this prophecy can be found in Surah An-Nisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there is none from the people of the scripture but that he will surely believe in Isa salam before his death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the belief in Isa alayhi salam will be established amongst all of the people of the book, including the Jews and the Christians before the death of Isa alayhi salam. At the same time, we are told in Surah Al-Maidah of the Quran that modern day Christians are kufr. They have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the Messiah, the son of Mary. They have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three. We are also told that Jews disbelieved and continue to disbelieve in Isa Islam, and that when Isa Islam came to them with the clear signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said that he was but a sorcerer. We are told in Surah Al-Maidah, and when restrained from you the children of Israel when you came to them with the clear signs, and the unbelievers among them said, This is nothing but sorcery manifest. Despite the many incredible miracles shown by Isa Islam by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Isa Islam would make a bird out of clay and blow air into it, and by the leave of Allah it would turn into a bird, or he would heal the blind and the leper by the leave of Allah, and they would be fully healed, or he would bring the dead forth back to life by the will and lead of Allah. Yet despite these clear signs, the Jews believed that Isa salam was a false prophet and a sorcerer. And this belief of the Jews exists to this day. So the Quran has told us of a prophecy that all of the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians will believe in Isa salam. And at the same time, we are told that modern day Christians and modern day Jews are disbelievers. So how will this prophecy be fulfilled? The answer is very simple. Isa salam will be able to establish the correct belief for the Jews and the Christians upon his return. He will say to the Christians that he is but a servant of Allah and that there is only one true God with whom none are associated. And he will tell the Jews that he is indeed the promised Messiah and righteous King sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I believe a clue, a hint of this event of the mass conversion of the people of the book into the Deen Allah is told to us in Surah An-Nasr of the Holy Quran. If you read commentary and tafsir of Surah An-Nasr, the victory that is spoken of is always ascribed to the conquest or fatah of Mecca, which indeed was a great victory for the Muslim army, a bloodless conquest of the holy city. But we know that the Quran is a book which reveals itself over time and that the ayat of the Quran have many meanings and interpretations. 
So let's read Surah An-Nasr together and examine the clue that we are told about this event. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Iza Jaa An-Nasrullahi Wal-Fat Wa Ra'ayta An-Nasa Yadkhuluna Fi Deen Allahi Afwaja Fasabbih Bihamdi Rabbika Wa Astaghfir Innahu Kana Tawwaba in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. When comes the help of Allah and victory, and you see the people entering into the religion of Allah in multitudes, in throngs, in masses, then proclaim the praise of Allah and ask forgiveness of Him, for He is the oft returning, the oft accepting of repentance. And I believe that the help of Allah which will come is the return of the righteous king, Isa alayhi salam. And the victory which is foretold is the victory of Islam over al-Masih at the Jal, the victory of Haq over Batil. And it is at this time when the people of the book will see Isa alayhi salam and witness the victory of the rightly guided Messiah, that they will learn the truth and enter into the religion of Allah in masses, in multitudes, in throngs. So now we can see how the prophecy about the return of Isa salam continues, and the story arc goes further. We are told how Isa salam will return a second time, how he will become the king and fulfill his role as the promised Messiah, how he will spend time on earth and become a middle-aged man, and then speak to the people of the book and tell them the truth. And as a result of the second period of his speech, the people of the book will all believe. And if you look at Ahadith, we can see the clear connection of this prophecy related to the people of the book believing in Isa salam and his return to earth a second time. And in this Sayyid Bukhari Hadith, the Prophet wasallam speaks about the return of Isa salam. He says, by him in whose hands my soul is, surely Jesus, the son of Mary, will soon descend amongst you and will judge mankind justly as a just ruler. And a single prostration to Allah in prayer will be better than the whole world and whatever is in it. And at this point, the narrator, Abu Huraira, radiyatallahu anhu, added, if you wish, you can recite this verse of the holy book. And there is none of the people of the scripture, the Jews and Christians, but must believe in him before his death. So now we can see how the ahadith are telling us about the connection of the return of Isa alayhi salam and the re-establishment of the correct belief of the people of the book. And now we come to the last phase of the story, the prophecy about Isa alayhi salam that once he returns as the king and messiah, once he reaches middle age, once he speaks to the people of the book, who will all assuredly believe in him and in deen Allah, at that point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of a promise that he has made to those people who will follow Isa alayhi salam in the end times. And that promise is found in Surah Ali Imran. It's so interesting really, Surah Ali Imran is just filled with prophecies about the return of Isa alayhi salam. Now if we examine ayat 55, we can see when Allah said, O oh Jesus, O oh Isa alayhi salam, indeed I will take you and raise you to myself and purify you from those who disbelieve and make those who follow you superior to those who disbelieve up until the day of resurrection. Then to me is your return, and I will judge between you concerning that in which you used to differ. So the people of the book and all those who follow Isa salam upon his return will be made superior above the disbelievers up until the day of resurrection. So the Holy Quran tells us the entire timeline and story of the prophecy and return of Isa salam starting with how Isa salam is the promised Messiah and will return to fulfill his role as a king, how he will live on the earth and reach middle age, and then he will speak to the people of the book and tell them the truth, and that as a result of his speech, all of the people of the book will believe in him, and that those who follow him 
will be made superior to the disbelievers up until the day of judgment under the righteous kingdom of Isa a.s. And in Surah Zukhruf of the Holy Quran, we are even told about how Isa a.s. is the major sign of the last hour, as well as the exact words that Isa a.s. will speak to those who follow him upon his second return. And in Surah Zukhruf of the Holy Quran, it reads, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإنه لإلم اللسات فلا تمترون بها And indeed he, Isa a.s. is a sign of the last hour so do not be in doubt of it. And we can be certain that this is an end times prophecy for two reasons. The first that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the last hour and secondly because we are told in ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, remember six things that will occur before the hour comes, one of which is my death. Count that as the first. And we are also told that Isa السلام, came 600 years before the Prophet Muhammad Therefore, it only makes sense for Surah Zukhruf to be speaking as an end times prophecy. Because the last hour began in 632 AD at the death of the Prophet Muhammad and in his first coming the Prophet Isa came 600 years before this time. When Isa first appeared, the last hour had not begun. He could not have been a sign of the last hour. Surah Zukhruf is telling us that Isa a.s. indeed is a sign of the last hour and that we should not be in doubt of it. Therefore, Isa a.s. must return during the end times as a sign for those people who are alive that the last hour is very close and is nearly upon us. And if we read the rest of this ayat, we learn an even more startling revelation. We're even told the speech of Isa a.s. where he says, وَاتَّبِيُونِ haza سِرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ Follow me, this is the straight path. Now if you were to read the translations of this ayat in the Holy Quran, the majority of the translators would ascribe the words, Follow me, this is the straight path. وَاتَّبِيُونِ haza سِرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ as the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, that is an incorrect translation. As servants of Allah, we cannot follow him. We can only follow another human being. What has happened in this ayat is iltifat. Iltifat in the Quran is a grammatical shift which occurs mid-dialogue. And a very common form of iltifat is a change in speaker from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a messenger of Allah within a single ayat. For example, in Surah Hud, it reads, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَكَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوهٌ إِلَّا قَوْمِهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَزِيرٌ مُبِينٌ And we had certainly sent Nu to his people. Indeed, I am to you a clear warner. Here is an example of Iltifat, where the first section of speech is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we had certainly sent Nu to his people. And then without a shift in context or a break in the ayat, it reads, Indeed I am to you a clear warner. And so we know that those must be the words of the messenger of Allah, Nu alayhi salam. The iltafat is between Allah and the messenger of Allah. And here is another example of iltifat between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah, Isa alayhi salam. And we can be certain that these words are spoken not by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but instead by Isa alayhi salam by recognizing the phrase, Haza siratum mustaqim. You see, everybody has a certain style of speaking or a phrase that they say often. If we read the Quran, and we analyze the typical speech of Isa a.s. it becomes abundantly clear that he uses a specific phrase at the end of his statements. Haza siratum mustaqim. 
For example, in Surah Maryam, we can see in Ayat 36, Wa inna Allaha Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu haza siratum mustaqim. Surely God is my Lord and your Lord, so serve Him. This is a straight path. Or in Surah Ali Imran, where it reads, And I have come confirming what was before me of the Torah, and to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. And I have come to you with a sign from your Lord, so fear Allah and obey me. And then it goes on to say, Inna Allaha Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu. Haza saratum mustaqim. Indeed, Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship Him. That is the straight path. And even further on in Surah Zukhruf, we can see, Inna Allaha hu Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu. Haza saratum mustaqim. This is a straight path. We can see that the Quran is filled with examples of the speech of Isa alayhi salam where his words end with the phrase Haza Siratum Mustaqim. It is his specific phrase that Isa alayhi salam prefers to speak as part of his style. And this has a profound implication because now the meaning of the words وَإِنَّهُ لَإِلْمُ اللِّسَاتِ فَلَا تَمْتُرُنَّ بِهَا وَالتَّابِيُونِ Haza Siratum Mustaqim become, and indeed Isa is a sign of the last hour, so be not in doubt of it, and Isa will say, Follow me, that is the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Isa salam is the sign of the last hour, and that we should not be in doubt of it. And then immediately we see the first person speech of Isa salam in the Quran addressed to the readers of the Quran, the Muslims, where he says, What tabiyuni, follow me. Haza siratum mustaqim. That is the straight path. And these are the words that Isa salam will speak upon his second return. And the most startling thing of all is that in the immediate next ayat, we are issued a very stern and serious warning. Let not the shaitan, the Satan, stop you. He is for you a manifest enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us, do not be led astray in this matter. And know that whoever tries to dissuade you about the return of Isa salam, even if they are an Islamic scholar, that they are not speaking with the right guidance. Do not let the Satan stop you. He is for you a manifest enemy. The belief in the return of Isa salam is essential for the salvation of the Muslims in the end times, to recognize the true Messiah, to not fall prey to the deception of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, to have firm faith in the end times, and to be able to withhold and withstand the harsh trials that humanity will be put through. And indeed, Isa alayhi salam is a sign of the last hour, so be not in doubt of it. And Isa will say, follow me, that is the straight path. Let not Satan stop you. He is for you a manifest enemy. So we can see how the Holy Quran itself informs us about the entire prophecy of the return of Isa alayhi salam. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has anointed Isa alayhi salam, the Messiah, the Messiah, and that Isa alayhi salam must return to earth and establish Allah's righteous kingdom and rule as its king. That Isa alayhi salam will reach a middle age, he will become waqahlan, a middle-aged man where he will speak to the people a second time. And that all of the people of the book, when they hear the words of Isa alayhi salam, will surely believe in the truth. And that those people who follow Isa alayhi salam will be made superior and dominant above the disbelievers up until the day of judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the clearest of words, and indeed, Isa alayhi salam is a sign of the last hour, so be not in doubt of it. And Isa will say, 
Follow me. That is the straight path. Let not Satan stop you. He is for you a manifest enemy. The Quran even tells us how Isa a.s. will return to earth and the mechanism by which Isa a.s. will be transported between the heavens and the earth. Now in science fiction, we know that there are portals, transporters, and other means of interdimensional travel. But the idea of such a feat happening in real life is truly miraculous. However, all things are simple and easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are told about the mechanisms by which Isa salam can be transported between the heavens and the earth in body and in soul. We all know that the first man, Hazrat Adam salam, was sent down from the heavens to the earth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah Ali Imran, it reads, Indeed the example of Jesus, indeed the example of Isa, to Allah is like that of Adam salam. He created him from dust, then he said to him, Be, and he was. The truth is from your Lord, so do not be among the doubters. It is clear to us that both Adam salam, and Isa salam, were made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala lahu kun fayakun, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke and said, Be, and it was. However, that is not the only way in which Isa salam, shares a similarity with Adam salam, and that is that Adam salam, was transported between the heavens and the earth alive in both spirit and body. And the only other person to whom that has already happened is Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam was raised up alive in spirit and in body from the earth to the heavens. And like Adam alayhi salam, he will be sent down from the heavens back to the earth in spirit and in body. The truth is from your Lord. So do not be among the doubters. And in Surah al maida we are told of a very interesting conversation where the disciples of Isa salam question whether it is possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to transport someone from the heavens to the earth in body and spirit alive. The ayat begin by saying, and remember when I, Allah, inspired to the disciples, Believe in me and in my messenger Jesus. They said, We have believed, so bear witness that indeed we are Muslimun. Indeed we, the disciples of Isa salam, are Muslims. And remember when the disciples said, O Isa ibn Maryam, can your Lord send down to us a table spread with food from heaven? Can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala achieve such a feat? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the capacity to send down a table of food from the heaven? And in response to this request, this proof, Isa alayhi salam said, Fear Allah if you should be believers. Isa alayhi salam reprimanded his disciples. Why are you requesting this sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are believers. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful, is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and yet you dare to ask that he has the capacity to send down a table of food from the heaven? Fear Allah if you should be believers. Yet the disciples replied, We wish to eat from it and let our hearts be reassured and know that you, Isa salam, have been truthful to us and be among its witnesses. What is the reassurance that the disciples were seeking from Isa salam? What is the truth for which they wanted a confirmation? What is the sign which they wanted to witness? We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the Prophet Isa alayhi salam, O Isa, indeed I will take you and raise you to myself and purify you from those who disbelieve. So the Prophet Isa alayhi salam knew that he would not be killed, 
that he would not be crucified and that he would be raised up alive. And he informed his disciples of this very important event. And in their love for Isa salam, in their fear for his well-being, they requested, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a proof that he has the capacity, the power and the capability to raise alive a person in body and in spirit from the world to the heavens. They wish to eat from it that their hearts be reassured. The truth which they wanted confirmation of was that Isa salam, could be raised alive between the heavens and the earth and that they could be among its witnesses. And the word Qad denotes expectation that they were expecting the event to occur. And so a more accurate translation of this ayat would read, They said, the disciples of Isa salam, We wish to eat from it so our hearts are reassured. And we know that you have been truthful to us about what you say will happen and that we are among its witnesses. And so the Prophet Isa salam, says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Allah, our Lord, send down to us a table spread with food from the heaven to be for us a festival for the first of us and the last of us and a sign from you and provide for us and you are the best of providers. So Isa salam, requests this massive sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the disciples are reassured so that their hearts are at rest, so that they know that Isa salam, has been truthful to them and that they can be among its witnesses. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies, Indeed, I will send it down to you. But whoever disbelieves afterwards from among you, then indeed will I punish him with a punishment by which I have not punished anyone among the worlds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala agrees and sends down the table of food from the heavens. But a condition is applied on the faith and the belief of the witnesses. That whosoever disbelieves after such a big sign has occurred, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him with a punishment which none has been punished with among the worlds. However, Isa salam asked Allah for more than just a table of food from heaven. He requested for that to be an aid for the first of us and the last of us and a sign from you. We as Muslims often associate the word Eid with festivals, for example, Eid al-Fitr. And in the dictionary, Eid is described as a festival or a periodical festival. But the true root meaning of the word Eid is an occurrence that returns, a time of return or an event that repeats. Therefore, the derived meaning of the word is festival. But first and foremost, Eid is an event that repeats. The word Eid in this ayat does not mean festival. It is often confused by the translators that what is being spoken of is the Passover festival, a Jewish holiday. However, the Hawariyun, the disciples of Isa al-Islam, were not interested in a meal. They were interested in having their hearts reassured of the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed a very strict and big condition on their belief. So this ayat now reads, Said Isa, the son of Mary, O Allah, our Lord, send down to us a table spread with food from the heaven to be for us a marker of an event that will repeat for the first of us and the last of us and a sign from you and provide for us and you are the best of providers. Who are the first of us and who are the last of us? We know in Surah Al-Maidah that the disciples said that we are Muslimun, we are Muslims. So the sign is for the first of the Muslims and the last of the Muslims. But what is the sign? Why was a table of food a marker for an event that will repeat and a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first 
and last of the Muslims. And if we look in the Bible, the answer becomes clear. And he, Isa salam, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down a table from heaven. And Isa salam, took the bread of the table and gave it to the disciples and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Know the truth that I have spoken to you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise me up alive, that I will not be killed, that I will not be crucified. And like the Maida that was sent from the heavens to the earth, my body will return with my spirit. So we can see the entire prophecy of the return of Isa alayhi salam clearly described to us in the Quran. How Isa alayhi salam is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the one who will assume the office of king upon his second return. That he will vanquish al Masih the Jal and establish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's righteous kingdom on earth. That he will live on the earth for a period of time where he will become waqahlan, a middle-aged man, when he will speak to the people and tell the people of the book the truth, they will all assuredly believe in him. And those amongst the people of the book who follow Isa alayhi salam, Jews, Christians, or Muslims will be raised above the disbelievers, made superior and dominant above the disbelievers up until the day of judgment. And we are even told in the Holy Quran that Isa salam is indeed a sign of the last hour, that we should not be in doubt of it. And the words that Isa salam will speak upon his return, وَاتَّبِيُونِي haza سِرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ And that we should not let the Satan, the Shaitan, lead us astray in this matter, in this most critical and important belief of Islamic eschatology, of Islam in the end times. And we have prepared a detailed and comprehensive book that explains these proofs in more detail with more evidence, commentary and tafsir called The Second Coming of Christ, Evidence from the Quran. And you can download this book from our website completely free of charge simply visit our website at www.thelastcrescent.com or click the link in the description. Download the ebook for free. And remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Now, let's get on to the most important part of this video. Following Isa alayhi salam as Muslims. We are told that the Prophet Isa alayhi salam will speak and he will say, وَاتَّبِيُونِي هَذَا سَرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ And yet Muslims face a dilemma in the idea of following in the footsteps of Isa alayhi salam. They fear that if they were to follow in the footsteps of Isa alayhi salam, that somehow they would become Christians, somehow they would lose their Islam, somehow they would no longer be Muslims. Let me reassure you that Isa alayhi salam is a Muslim and that all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Muslims. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Say, we have believed in Allah and in what was revealed to us and what was revealed to Ibrahim alayhi salam, to Ismail alayhi salam, to Ishaq alayhi salam, to Yaqub alayhi salam, and the descendants and in what was given to Musa alayhi salam and Isa salam, and to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims. We are told that Salah and Zakah are enjoined upon Isa salam. He must perform the Salah, he must perform the Zakah because he is a Muslim. And in the Quran we are told, O oh, you who have believed, Decreed upon you as fasting as it was decreed upon those before you. In the Dina, in the Allah al Islam, indeed the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Isa alayhi salam was 
and is a Muslim. And if you look at Christianity today, the remnants, the hints of the Islam of Isa Islam can still be seen to this day. This is a short video of an Orthodox Christian man performing the Lord's Prayer. See if you can recognize how he prays. Abuna de Bishmaya Yet Kadash Shama Tete Malkuta Tefe Reuta Hek de Bishmaya of Alara Lakmana de Mistea Havlana Yomadana Ushavuk Lana Hovaina Kedi Shabakna Lehaya Vaina Vaal Taal Lanana Lenesion Be Ramatsel Namin Bisha Lak Malkuta Uge Horta Bikara Adala Malma This man is performing Salah. And if you notice, he even has a thasbi on his hand. Even more surprisingly, Christians pray in Jamaat and prostrate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هنا ما زال المؤمنون يؤدون صلواتهم وفق الطريقة التقليدية التي نشأ. And perhaps most surprising of all is that when Isa alayhi salam, in his language, the language of Aramaic, delivered the message of Allah subhanahu wa taala, he did not speak of God. He spoke the word Allah, because the Aramaic word for God. Is Allah. The, the three languages, Semitic languages, the, the Aramaic, the Arabic, and the Hebrew, with the, the original word of God is very similar. So in Arabic, it's Allah, yeah, A L L A H. Yeah. In Aramaic, this original born uh, language of Jesus Christ, this uh, before him, it was uh, uh, Allah. So it's L A H. Yeah. So one L less. And then in uh, Hebrew is uh, Elo, yeah? E L O H, yeah? so Allah, Allah, Elo. And perhaps most surprising of all is that Allah by name is directly mentioned in the Bible, in the language Aramaic, the language of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Assalamu alaikum. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طيب ثا شلام الله أبو مران إشو مشيخة Let's read that again, but listen very carefully. طيب ثا شلام الله أبو مران إشو مشيخة The Christians out there must be saying, oh, this is just a Muslim reciting his Quran again, but I'm actually reciting the Holy Bible in Aramaic, the language of Jesus, peace be upon him. Let's read what I just read in Aramaic in English now. Grace be with you from God to the Anointed One. Grace be with you from God. God. Taybutha shalama Allah. Wait a minute. Why is the Aramaic Bible saying Allah? I don't get it. The Christians are saying, well, because Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Yes, we're at the Trinity again. But there are two different meanings and two different words used in this verse. Allah, that is God, and Mashiha or Messiah, as you know in English. Grace be with you from God. From God, not the Trinity, not from Jesus. And God here is speaking to Jesus. Mashiach. Grace be with you from God to the Anointed One. Two separate things here. God is definitely separating himself from the Anointed One, or Mashiach. So to the Christians that say that Allah is a pagan God, he's this, he's that, Allah doesn't exist, that he is a false god, well, I think that you should read your own Bible in the language of your own savior, that is Aramaic, and find out for yourself. Shalama alaykum, salam And alaykum. in Aramaic, they say, Shalam alaykum. 
So when Isa salam returns and the Prophet wasallam told us, Give my salam to my brother Isa, and we say, Your brother Ahmed sends his salam upon you, Assalamu alaikum, the Prophet Isa salam will reply, Wa alaikum shalam. And this is a short video by Paul at Blocking Theology. Paul is a religious studies scholar, a theologian, and a convert from Christianity to Islam. His YouTube channel features many Muslim scholars with commentary on the Quran and beliefs in Islam. And in this short video, he speaks about the true belief in Isa salam and the message brought by Isa salam. Those who most publicly confess to be followers of Jesus, the Christians today, are mostly not following the faith of Jesus and his original disciples themselves. People who are, though, following that original understanding um, are, of course, Muslims, because unlike Jews, Muslims still do accept Jesus as a prophet, as the, the promised Messiah. Now, Jews, unfortunately, uh, do not. So, so one could argue the only people today who are authentically following the real Jesus, the Jesus of history, are and remember, Muslims. The disciples of Isa salam said, "We are Muslimun. Muslimun. We are Muslims." And yet, despite the fact that the Quran is so clear that Isa salam is a Muslim that his religion was Islam. There are many, many prominent Islamic scholars who say that Isa salam, upon his second return will have no role to play for the Muslims and that we as Muslims should not follow him. And so it is important for us to address this troubling misguidance. This is a short clip of a lecture by Ahmed Didan, where he expresses his scholarly view about the impact of Isa salam's return on the Muslims. And what should we as a Muslim Ummah do when Isa salam returns? But what he's referring to is, do I believe whether Jesus Christ is coming? I said, yes, he's coming. What is he going to come and do? I said, I don't need him. I personally, I don't need him. I've got everything that I want, Allah wanted to give, he's given to me in the Quran. He can't come. So why should he come? What is he going to come and do? He can't teach you the Sharia. He can't tell you now Salat, Maghrib, it's a three, make four. You can't say, look, Fajr, is two, two rakat, it's a make it four. No, he can't do that. Finish. So what can he come and teach you or me? Nothing. Then what is he going to come and do? He's needed. Wallah, he's needed. But not by us. The Christians need him. So Jesus is going to talk to the Christians. He's needed. But it's needed by the one billion billion Christians of the world, not by the Muslims. According to Ahmad Didat's scholarly opinion, Isa salam cannot teach us anything. He cannot teach us anything. He has no role for the Muslims. He is needed by the Christians. But let me ask you a simple question as a thought experiment. Imagine, if you can, that a learned scholar from the past, for example, Imam Ibn Khatir, were to return to earth, would you be interested in learning from him and hearing his opinions and understanding what he thinks about the world? I certainly would. Let's take it one step further. Let's imagine if a righteously guided Khalifa, such as Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu, were to return. Will you turn around to him and say, You cannot teach me anything? I know all there is to know about Islam. You do not know better than me. I am not interested in your opinions or your view of the world. And let's take it one step further. Let's imagine if Hazrat Musa salam, or Hazrat Ibrahim salam, were to return to earth. Would you say to them that you cannot teach me anything? I am not interested in what you know of Islam, that I do not need 
you or your guidance? Is that the state of us today as Muslims? That we will sit in a crowd and applaud such baseless words? Do we not know that the Quran tells us so clearly that he has ordained for you of religion what he enjoined upon Nuh and that which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, and what we have enjoined upon Ibrahim and Musa and Isa to establish the religion and not be divided therein. Allah has ordained for you of religion what he enjoined upon Isa And the Prophet has told us that I am most akin, I am most similar to Isa among the whole of mankind. And all the Prophets are of different mothers that belong to one religion and no Prophet was raised between me and Jesus. How can we as Muslims turn to the man whom the Prophet is telling us is the closest to him, the most similar to him among the whole of mankind and is his brother? Will we turn to this man and say, we do not need you? You cannot teach us anything? Go away from us? We know better than you? Is that really what the scholars of Islam think. And this is a short clip from Sheikh Imran Hussein, the most preeminent scholar of Islamic eschatology for whom I have great respect. On answering the same question, what will be the role of Isa Salam for the Muslims when he returns? What should we do as Muslims when Isa Salam comes back to earth? Should we follow him and be his followers or not. What does the Shaykh have to say about this? The question is, will Jesus, Nabi Isa salam, would he have his followers when he returns? Would he have his followers, people who follow him? I don't follow him, I follow Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him. But will Jesus have his followers who will follow him when he returns? That is the question. And so those who follow Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, will follow the Sharia of the sacred law which came to Muhammad, Allah's blessing. So we will fast this way in Ramadan. And we will pray in the direction of this Qibla. This is Makkah, although there are those who way free in the direction of Washington. And they will be people who are following Jesus. And they will have their Sharia because they're following him. They're not following Muhammad, Allah's blessing. So they will have their Sharia. And they will have their way of fasting. And these will continue like this until the last day. And these will continue like this until the last day. And so there will be two ummah. The Shaykh is saying that when Isa alayhi salam returns, somehow he will not return upon Islam. Although Isa salam, always was a Muslim, when he returns, he will somehow not be a leader of the Muslims. Somehow Isa salam, will not pray towards the Qibla, towards the house of Allah built by his forefather Ibrahim salam. That somehow Isa salam, will not know the Sharia, will not know the Salah, will not pay the Zakah as a Muslim. Even though we know so clearly in the Ahadith that upon the return of Isa salam, he will perform the Salah with the Muslims and that there will not be two Ummas. The Messenger of Allah, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, said, there are two groups of my Ummah. There are two groups of the Muslim Ummah, not the Christian Ummah, not the Jewish Ummah, but that there are two groups of the Muslims whom Allah will free from the fire. The group that invades India and the group that will be with Isa ibn Maryam, peace be upon him. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that those people from among the Muslim Ummah who will be with Isa salam, will be freed from the fire. The Prophet has told us, By him in whose hand is my life, 
by swearing upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Isa alayhi salam would certainly pronounce talbiya for hajj or for umrah or for both in the valley of Roha. Isa alayhi salam will perform the hajj because Isa alayhi salam is a Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said that if anyone testifies that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone who has no partners and that Muhammad is his slave and his apostle. La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah and that paradise is true and hell is true and one more condition then Allah will admit him into paradise with the deeds which he had done even if those deeds were few. So what is that further last condition that Isa alayhi salam is Allah's messenger, is Allah's servant, is Allah's word which he bestowed on the Virgin Mary and a spirit created by him? Why is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam telling us this? He is informing us of the importance of Isa alayhi salam because the Prophet has told us that Isa alayhi salam is closest to him amongst the whole of mankind and is his brother, the righteously guided King and Messiah who will save the believers, the Muslims in the end times, which is why he is warning us to remember the truth. And in this Sahih Hadith, in Sunan Abi Dawood, the Prophet وسلم, tells us that Isa alayhi salam will fight the people for the cause of Islam. Isa alayhi salam will fight the people for the cause of Islam because he will be a Muslim and Allah will perish all religions except Islam. There will not be two ummahs in the end times. He will fight in the cause of Islam, not in the cause of Christianity, not in the cause of Judaism, but in the cause of the one true faith. In the in the Allah and Islam. And in this video by Dr. Shabir Ali, he correctly points out that Isa alayhi salam will return upon the Sharia of Islam and as a Muslim. Yet he makes a very grave error in the role of Isa alayhi salam. So let's see what Dr. Shabir Ali has to say. In, in this Muslim uh, expectation, uh, Jesus on whom be peace uh, is a Muslim himself. He's a submitter to God. In the coming back in the current era, he would naturally follow the uh, way uh, that has been taught by our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, the universal world prophet. And uh, uh, it's basically the same way that Muslims are already uh, following. So be mm -hmm. Jesus would fit in nicely among the Muslims and, um, and nothing really would happen to the Muslims. I, I think, I think this is a Christian asking this question and maybe thinking about their understanding of when Christ returns and, and therefore, you know, what would happen to Muslims then? Yeah, so so the, the Christian understanding is that uh, Jesus is returning as the judge of the world. Uh, in Acts of the Apostles, the, uh, the Apostle Paul is uh, shown to be saying, well, you know, that God has appointed a man uh, to, to judge the world. So Jesus will come back as, as the judge in that time. And um, he will, other passages of the Bible say he will reward people for their good deeds and then punish others for their bad and so on. Uh, so uh, maybe a Christian might be thinking if we take that literally, it looks like Muslims are, are going to be really in, in for a shock when Jesus returns. But that is not the Muslim So according to Dr. Shaver Ali, it is not the Muslim understanding that when the Prophet Isa alayhi salam returns, that he will be the judge of the world and a just ruler over mankind. Then why does it say in this Sahih Bukhari Hadith, By him in whose hands my soul is, surely Isa alayhi salam, Isa ibn Maryam will soon descend amongst you and will judge mankind justly as a just ruler. So why is it that we as Muslims are confused about these clear signs, about these clear words, and about these clear prophecies about the return of Isa alayhi salam. A troubling trend has emerged in recent times. 
where this once well understood belief in the return of Isa is now being questioned and false narratives are being spread that aim to convince Muslims that Isa a.s. will never return again. And it is of utmost importance that we address and disprove these false narratives directly. The first claim made by these proponents of false narratives is that Isa a.s. will not return because in the oldest book of Ahadis amongst the Sahih Sitta, the Mawatta Malik, there is no mention of the return of Isa a.s. So therefore, all of the other ahadis and all of the other Sahih Sitta must be pure fabrications. However, this is simply incorrect. The Mawatta Malik is a book of ahadis compiled by Imam Malik and it is indeed considered to be from the earliest existing collections of hadiths that form the basis of Islamic jurisprudence. It is reported that Imam Malik selected for inclusion into the Mawatta just over 1,900 narrations from the over 100,000 narrations he had available to him with the purpose to create a text which could help remove the juristic differences between the scholars. Mawatta Malik has no ahadith on the last hour or end times whatsoever because this was outside of the scope for the task of jurisprudence, for the task of law. There was no need for Imam Malik to include a hadith about the end times when he was compiling a book of law. And there is no mention in the Mawata Malik of the end time signs which are in the Quran, such as Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Dukhan, or Dabatan al Ard. Therefore, a lack of mention of the return of Isa salam in the Mawata Malik does not mean that all of the other Sahih Hadiths and all of the other books of Hadiths are fabricated. Rather, Imam Malik was simply focused on jurisprudence. In the false narratives about Isa a.s. not returning to earth is that Isa a.s. was killed and when he was raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his spirit was taken permanently and that he will never return again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption, and they did not kill him for certain. Rather, Allah raised him to himself. And the word is, Tawafaytani, translated as you took me up. However, in the Quran, we are told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take a person's soul for a prolonged period of time in two ways. A temporary taking called yatawafi or sleep. For example, the people of the cave slept for 300 years. And a permanent taking of your soul is called mawt. In Surah Al-Anam it says, And it is he who takes your souls by night and knows what you have committed by day. Then he revives you therein that a specified term may be fulfilled. But particularly amongst the Urdu-speaking world, the word fought and month are not distinguished. They both mean death. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us that yatawafi is sleep, a temporary taking of the soul, and month is death. And Isa alayhi salam was raised up alive in a state of yatawafi, in a state of sleep. And therefore, Isa alayhi salam will return. Ahadith literature is filled with Sahih narrations about the return of Isa a.s. which speak in great detail about his return to earth, when Isa a.s. will return, where he will return, what will the state of the world be like upon his return, and what is the role of Isa a.s. when he returns, what will he do upon the earth, and how should we as Muslims prepare for his return? And in this presentation, we have aimed to solidify this belief amongst the Muslims through clear proofs directly from the Holy Quran. And we have seen the entire story arc of the prophecy of the return of Isa a.s. How Isa a.s. must return to earth as the Messiah, as the King, the righteously guided leader of the whole world, and a just judge 
and a just ruler. How Isa Islam will speak to the men twice, and that the second time of his speech, the second period of his speech, will be when Isa Islam is a middle-aged man, and therefore Isa Islam must return to earth and reach middle age for that prophecy to be fulfilled. And that when Isa Islam speaks to the people of the book and they see the victory of Islam, then they will all believe in him. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make those who follow in the footsteps of Isa Islam superior to the disbelievers up until the last day, the day of judgment. And we are told so clearly in the Holy Quran that Isa Islam is a sign of the last hour, so be not in doubt of it. And that Isa Islam will say, Follow me, that is the straight path. Let not Satan stop you, he is for you a manifest enemy. We then reviewed how many Islamic scholars try and dissuade Muslims from following in the footsteps of Isa Islam, despite the clear instructions of the Prophet Muhammad and clear words in the Holy Quran, وَاتَّبِيُونِي هَذَا سِرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ If you wish to be upon the Sirat al-Mustaqeem, then you must follow Isa Islam upon his return. But be at ease, because Isa Islam will return as a Muslim. He was a Muslim and always will be a Muslim upon the Deen Allah and Sharia of Islam. And lastly, we disproved those false narratives that try and persuade people that Isa Islam will not return, and we expose the baseless nature of such false analysis. The prophecy of the return of Isa Islam is unfolding before our very eyes, and the signs of his return are all around us. And so I pray that in these times of darkness, in these times of death, destruction, and the downfall of Islam around the world, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlightens our hearts with His nur, that He shows us the right path, the sirat al mustaqim and that He makes us amongst those people who can endure the challenges and difficulties that lie on that path ahead of us. I pray that we are amongst those Muslims who stand firm with their faith against oppression, persecution, and the fitna of the evildoers. I pray that we are amongst those Muslims who will protect the banner of Islam, and that when Isa alayhi salam returns, you can convey the salam of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to him. And then, when Isa alayhi salam says, وَاتَّبِيُونِي هَذَا سَرَاتٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ We are amongst the first to say that we are Muslims, we submit to the one true God with whom we associate no others. And O Isa ibn Maryam, pious servant of Allah and pious brother of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, we send salam upon you. We will follow in your footsteps. So please be a witness for us on the last day. Insha'Allah. Ameen. We hope you found this presentation useful. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. And remember to visit our website at www.thelastcrescent.com. That's www.thelastcrescent.com. You can download a free ebook which we have compiled with detailed scholarly and academic analysis with further proofs, evidences, and commentary about the return of Hazrat Isa al Islam in Islam with evidences directly from the Holy Quran. So remember to please visit our website and download that ebook for free. And thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.